Hi, this is a Minnesota Viking football helmet. It was in the middle of a lot of hard-nosed football last year. It took a lot of punishment and it handed out some too. When this helmet was put away at the end of last season, it looked back on a record of three wins and 11 losses. Not a bad record for a brand new team in a league as rough as the NFL. There was a great spirit on the Viking squad. It was just wonderful to see those boys get up each week for another big effort. And behind this team was a great bunch of fans. I guess the enthusiasm was catching. Your support made defeat a little less bitter and victory a lot sweeter. Now, thanks to the folks who make Grain Belt beer, you're going to see some highlights from the Vikings' first year in the National Football League. After 18 months of careful planning, the Minnesota Vikings enter the star-studded world of the National Football League. Spearheaded by the now famous Minutemen, the people of the upper Midwest rally behind the new Viking franchise by buying 26,000 season tickets at a time when their club was nothing but a franchise and a front office. Now their faith is rewarded as head coach Norm Van Brocklin leads 33 veterans and 12 rookies into battle against the all-powerful NFL lineup. Thirty-two thousand hopeful fans cram beautiful Metropolitan Stadium as the Vikings play their first league game against the rugged Chicago Bears. Norm Van Brocklin's Vikings take an early three-nothing lead and look for more as rookie Fran Targanen hits Mel Triplett, who takes the swing pass on a violent trip to the Bear 15. It doesn't take Targanen long to prove that he's one rookie who's here to stay. Fran's pass to Bob Stelker gives the Vikings their first touchdown and official league play. Bears bounce back as Ed Brown goes to the air with a 23-yard pass to Johnny Morris. Jack Morris finally stops him to keep Chicago from scoring. Rick Caceres completes the assignment with a plunge into pay dirt. The Bears fail to convert and the Vikings have a 10-6 lead at halftime. Minnesota's giving its fans their money's worth. Clancy Osborne forces Willie Gallimore to fumble in the third quarter. And Rich Mustardi recovers for Minnesota on the Chicago 27. Grant Targeted, who was a collegiate star at Georgia, continues to spark the attack. Hugh McElhinney takes his pass to the Chicago 14. Two plays later, the Viking quarterback pulls one out of a Van Brocklin lesson plan. It's a beauty to Jerry Reitkow, who has it for the touchdown, and Minnesota leads 17 to 6. With the Viking defense caging the Bears, Minnesota moves in the third quarter. Markinen hits Dave Middleton for 10 yards and a first down. The elusive Tarkinen sometimes finds himself in a jam, but he calmly gets out of it like an old pro and makes the Bears wish they had stayed home today. Jerry Reichow makes a great catch on the Chicago one. The bear line holds for three plays, so Fran goes to the air on fourth down. Hugh McElhinney has it for the third Viking TD. Trailing 24-6 late in the third quarter, Ed Brown tries to strike quickly for Chicago, but his pass is deflected by Jim Marshall. And With Alderman, Huth, Lapham, Raybould, and Yuso doing a great job of blocking, Tarkinen initiates a screen pass to Hugh McElhinney, who pours it on for a 26-yard gain. Again, it's the freshman quarterback passing this time, Tommy Mason. The Vikings' top draft choice takes the fake skin for 11 yards, and it's goal to go Minnesota in the fourth quarter. One of Tarkenton's favorite patterns is a rollout option. There's no doubt about it, Fran is running this one himself, and he scores to give the Vikings a smashing 31-6 advantage. With Billy Wade at the helm, the Bears try to move in the final quarter, but Jack Morris is Johnny on the spot, an intercept for Minnesota. 
He returns 25 yards, and here come the Vikings. A holding penalty sets the Vikings back 15 yards, so Tarkenton uncorks a pass to Dave Middleton, who spears it on the sideline for a 25-yard game. On fourth down from the Bear 2, Tarkenton fires a running strike to Dave Middleton in the end zone. Chicago scores once more, but it's not enough. Responsible for all the Viking touchdowns, Fran Tarkenton, with his phenomenal rookie performance, stuns the Bears 37-13. Vikings ran into stormy seas after their great opener, but they put up a battle in every game. We picked them up at home for their second meeting with the Colts. Baltimore won a squeaker 34-33 on a 52-yard field goal with only one second left on the clock at Baltimore. It's the Colts with the ball as Johnny Unitas tries one of his quick exploders. It blows up in his face when Rip Hawkins makes a key interception and returns to the Viking 48. That big Colt defensive line staring him in the face. Fran Tarkenton drops back to pass, but sees daylight around the right side. Things get brighter as Fran gains 16 yards on the play. <laughs> Tarkenton on a key third down play completes a pass to Hugh McElhenney, and the Vikings are deep in the Colt corral. <laughs> Rookie from Georgia goes to the air again, and Jerry Reichow makes a tremendous grab before going out of bounds on the Colt one. Mel Triplett goes through under a full head of steam, and it's Minnesota 7, Colts nothing after one period. <laughs> With the Colts trailing 7 nothing, we find Tarkenton looking to take advantage of the situation in the second period. But alert Gary Glick intercepts the pass for Baltimore and laterals to Bob Boyd, who winds up on the Viking 24. A hole opens up for Joe Purry and the great Colt workhorse chews up 22 yards before Dean Derby can bring him down. <laughs> Number 25, Alex Hawkins takes the hand off and goes in from the two-yard line. The conversion ties things up 7-7. Seven to seven. After the kickoff, it's the Vikings on the loose. Jerry Youth and Mike Raybol lead Hugh McElhenney for an eight-yard advance. Now Tarkenton displays his passing genius. He whips one to Jerry Reichow for 29 yards, and it's first down on the Colt 27. Again, the classy quarterback looks to throw. Hugh McElhenney has it and goes to the Colt 10, where Bobby Boyd applies the brakes. It doesn't take Tarkenton very long to find his receivers as he hits Dave Middleton just outside the Colt end zone. It's fourth and one, so Hugh McElhenney, a real workhorse, stampedes over the goal line. The extra point, Minnesota's on top, 14 to 7. The Colts break loose as Joe Purry carries for 11 yards until Jim Prestel, Jim Leo, and Charlie Sumner gang up to stop him. Plenty more doesn't like to be tied down anywhere, and here he goes for 14 yards to midfield. One of the best passing combinations in the NFL is Johnny Unitas throwing to Raymond Burry. Burry's brought down by Justin Rowland after a 32-yard game. Three yards are all any more needs as he slices over for the touchdown. Point after makes it a new game, 14-14, and that's the way it stands at halftime. Baltimore goes ahead on Steve Myers' 37-year-old field goal early in the third quarter, but the Vikings come right back as Mel Triplett grinds out 15 yards on a trap play. Hugh McElhenney runs wide and picks up four more before he's swarmed under by Colts. It's time for the Tarkenton special as he pinpoints a pass to Dave Middleton, who breaks away from Gary Glick. Middleton cuts back to his left so Hugh McElhenney can give him a helping hand. The two Vikings journey into the end zone, a touchdown richer, and Minnesota leaps ahead 21-17 on the 57-yard play.
starts the fourth quarter with a score 21 20. United's pass is for the Colts, but Dean Derby steals the ball. Derby delights the home folks with his 30 yard return on a timely interception. Tarkenden rolls out to his right and finds no one clear, so he makes a dash to the one foot line before going out of bounds. It looked pretty crowded up the middle, but Fran filtered through for the score. Minnesota makes that all important conversion to lead 28 to 20. Johnny Unitas, a master at pulling the close ones out in the dying moments, connects with D. Mackey for 19 yards. Unitas again drops back this time. It's a screen pass to Alex Hawkins for 15 yards, and Baltimore has a first down on the Minnesota 7. With time taking away, Unitas again hits Alex Hawkins with a pass, but Carl Rupke dumps him hard at the four-yard line. Second down, Joe Furry tries the middle of the Viking line, but Rip Hawkins and Jim Marshall aren't budging an inch. On third down, Unitas goes for a quick pitch to Raymond Burry, who can't hang on, and Minnesota digs in. On fourth down, the Vikings, in a tremendous effort, give Joe Furry only one inch of turf. Time runs out on the Colts, and Minnesota takes a sweet 28-20 decision in one of the season's finest games. Playing their best football before the home crowd, Minnesota's offensive-minded Vikings take on the Los Angeles Rams at Metropolitan Stadium, looking for their third win of the season. It's early in the first period, and the Vikings are forced to punt out of trouble. Mike Mercer gets off a good boot to Dick Bass, who calls for a fair catch. The pass bobbles when hit by his own man, and alert Charlie Sumner pounces on the loose pigskin at the Ram 31. Rand Tarkenton, now a full-fledged pilot, takes advantage of the 14 yards. Hugh McElhenney behind good blocking takes Tarkenden's swing pass and blasts through the Ram defense for a 17-yard touchdown tour. <laughs> Minnesota strikes first, 7 to nothing. The Vikings come back for more later in the period. Dave Middleton hangs on to Tarkenden's pass for 18 yards. <laughs> Fullback Raymond Hayes slices through on a quick opener and goes for 12 yards. Tarkenden has the Vikings moving full speed ahead as he flips a safety valve pass to Tommy Mason, who scampers to the Ram 32. <laughs> Raymond Hayes, who's doing a bang-up job in the fullback spot, gains nine more with Viking backers cheering him on as the quarter ends. Tarkenden calls on Ray Hayes to open the second period. Hayes hammers out 11 yards on the draw play, and it's goal to go Vikings from the seven. The Viking rookie tries his own number around the right side, but Dave Jones reacts quickly to make the stop after a three-yard advance. From the one, Tommy Mason slams over for the score, and Mercer's conversion makes it a 14-0 affair. Doesn't take the Rams long to realize they have a battle on their hands as Ollie Matson takes an inside handoff and heads for the outside. The nine-year veteran bolts up the sidelines with Carl Rupke and Dean Derby in hot pursuit, but Matson streaks all the way for 69 yards and a Ram score. Los Angeles still trails 14 to seven. Targeted looks for a quick counter, but has to settle for a nine-yard advance on his own. Lamar Lundy tracks him down on the 44. Now that the groundwork has been completed, Tarkenden goes upstairs with a pass to Jerry Reichow on a crisscross pattern. Reichow takes it going away, and before anyone can get near him, the fleet flanker is over for a 51-yard touchdown play. Minnesota applies the pressure, 21-7. It's late in the second period as Ram quarterback Frank Ryan pitches out to Dick Bass, who hammers out 18 yards before he runs into his own man, plus defensive halfback Jack Morris. Now Zeke Fretkowski goes into the aerial act, 
Ollie Matson has the pigskin and manages to elude three Vikings. Then Jack Morris nails him before things get too far out of hand on the 41-yard play. On the Viking 10, Zeke Bretkowski moves back for a pass and lets it go into the waiting arms of Jim Phillips. It's a real battle royal as the first half ends with the Vikings still on top, 21 to 14. Third quarter gets off to a fast and furious start with Dick Bass taking a second down pitch for a ride around the left side. With downfield blocking paving the way, Bass bounds away on a 73-yard explosion that rocks Metropolitan Stadium. It's a new game with a score knotted at 21-21. Tarkenton's a smooth operator under fire. He calmly passes to Dave Middleton for 12 yards and a first down. And off to Ray Hayes, keeps the fire going for another first down. With Gary Huth opening the door, Hayes has room to squeeze through and pick up 18 yards to the Ram 24. It looks as if Tarkenton is going to the air on third down, but he's one of the runningest quarterbacks in the league. Fran flashes fine form for a first down on the nine. Tarkenton again drops back for what looks like a carbon copy of the last play, but this time he does pass, and Jerry Reichow takes it in the end zone for a touchdown as the Vikings quickly take the lead, 28-21, and the fans love it. The Rams are anxious to strike back, but the Viking defense is on the alert as Zeke Bretkowski's pass is picked off by Clancy Osborne, who returns the interception to the Ram 22. Tarkenton turns the tables by passing for Minnesota. He's on target with his running pitch to Dave Middleton for 13 yards. The middle of the line opens up a nice hole for Ray Hayes to shoot through, and it's goal to go on the two. Tarkenton goes with his fullback again, and Ray Hayes leaps over the wall to score. The Vikings are rolling with a 35-21 cushion. Los Angeles can't move the ball, so Joe Marconi punts out of trouble. Tommy Mason, a rookie who improves with every game, fields the ball and returns it 13 yards to the Minnesota 41. Vikings start the wheels turning again as Dave Middleton nets eight yards on this pass play. Tarkenton again looks to pass. It's Dave Middleton open near the sideline, and the Vikings have another first down. A fake pitch followed by a handoff to Raymond Hayes, and it's a 22-yard march up the middle. Minnesota's camped on the Rams 17 as the quarter ends. Viking quarterback starts the fourth quarter in fine fashion as he throws a pass to Gordon Smith for a 12-yard touchdown play. It's more than enough to complete the day's activities as the Vikings roll up their biggest point total of the campaign with a devastating 42-21 masterpiece over the Los Angeles Rams. Few experts gave Minnesota much chance to do more than show up each week in their first season in the power-laden NFL, but Van Brocklin's Vikings stunned the opposition three times and finished ninth in the league in scoring. Now let's meet a few of these valiant Vikings. One of the biggest surprises was the Dutchman's rookie find, number 10, Fran Tarkenden. His four TD passes in three different games will long be remembered. Against the Detroit Lions, Fran fires a long one from his own end zone to Dave Middleton for 46 yards. When Tarkenton's receivers are covered, he proves to be doubly dangerous as a runner. Fran pulls the Vikings out of a hole against the Colts. Tarkenton has time to sight in on his receivers, so the Georgia rookie guides his missiles with uncanny accuracy to their targets. A.D. Williams has this one for 49 yards. The 
Vikings ran into a hungry team of Rams in Los Angeles, but Tarkenden starred in a losing 31-17 cause. He hits McElhenney for crucial yardage. In the same game, he completes one to Will Sherman for 32 yards as the Vikings prove they can strike either on the ground or through the air. Sometimes the plays don't actually come off the way Tarkenden plans, but he's a slippery guy who usually gets his passes away. Dave Middleton makes a great grab of this one. Tarkenden comes through in the clutch as he completes this fourth down pass to Gordy Smith and keeps a Viking drive going. Tarkenden fades to pass against the 49ers in Kizar Stadium. Gordy Smith leaves Dave Baker in the dust and easily races the rest of the way to complete a 71-yard pass play. While Tarkenden was making the Viking offense click, number 26, Charlie Sumner, was bolstering the defense from his halfback position. The Colts have the ball at Baltimore as Mike Summer, number 26, streaks for the goal line only to have his TD aspirations blasted by Charlie Sumner's jarring tackle. Green Bay's Paul Horning, the league's most valuable player, fumbles when hit by Sumner and later said that it was the hardest he'd been hit all year. Zeke Bretkowski of the Rams tries to pass against Minnesota, but Jolly Sumner steals the pigskin for a key interception. The Rams' Bretkowski pitches to Dick Bass, who's racked up immediately, and Sumner recovers for Minnesota. Bratkowski tries his luck with a short pass, but Sumner breaks up the play anyway. The Lions have the ball at Detroit as Jim Donowski looks for Jim Gibbons, but Charlie Sumner's terrific on pass defense, and he breaks up the play. Jerry Reichow, number 89, was Fran Tarkenden's favorite target during the 1961 campaign. If the ball was anywhere near him, Jerry Reichow would make the play. Vikings are on offense against the 49ers. Targeting pitches to Reichow, who takes it in the end zone for a touchdown. At home against the Rams, Reichow put on a real pass-catching show, and the Vikings won 42-21. It's Vikings ball at Detroit as Jerry Reichow gets between two Lion defenders to make a sensational catch of Tarkenden's aerial. <laughs> Bears have their trouble stopping this combination. Tarkenden avoids being trapped, then shoots a strike in Reichow's direction. Jerry has it for his 11th TD of the season. Seven-year NFL veteran was the top Viking catcher of the season. When Reichow was traded to Minnesota, he blossomed into one of the game's top receivers. Reichow's the life of the party when there's a crowd around him on a pass play. He makes an amazing TD catch against the Bears on opening day as the Vikings jolt Chicago 37-13. Tommy Mason, the All-America from Tulane, progressed rapidly in his first professional season with the Vikings despite an early season injury. He's an outstanding running back and very dangerous on punts and kickoff return. The Bears kick off to the Vikings with Tommy Mason waiting to receive the ball. Mason feels it five yards deep in the end zone and brings it all the way back to the Viking 30. Tommy Mason does more than just run. Here he makes a circus catch against the Rams. The 
The shifty halfback can also change directions with lightning speed. Ram defenders couldn't stop him at Metropolitan Stadium. Mason, who runs both inside or around end with equal effectiveness, gets plenty of help on this play as he goes for 19 yards against the 49ers. Bill Lapham opens a hole for Mason to cut through, and Tommy strikes quickly for a touchdown against the 49ers. Number 58, Rip Hawkins, is a first-year linebacker from North Carolina who knows how to infiltrate the enemy position as well as pilfer the pigskin. Don't take your eyes off the middle linebacker. Hawkins intercepts Bart Starr's pass and grinds out 17 yards for Minnesota against the champion Packers. Keep your eyes glued on number 58 again as Hawkins really makes that leather crack. Tom Moore loses two yards for the Packers. Eddie LeBaron doesn't find the going easy when Hawkins begins playing catch with the Cowboy quarterback's passes. Rip returns this ball deep into the Cowboy territory where LeBaron takes a turn on defense. Hawkins has that ability to anticipate the play the top linebackers need. He puts a stop to J.D. Smith's advance in the 49er game. Number 39 is the veteran Hugh McElhenney. He's one of the greatest ball carriers in National Football League history. Co-captain of the Viking squad, McElhenney sets a prime example for hustle and determination on the gridiron. The Rams punt out of the danger zone, but Hugh McElhenney's a tower of power on punt returns. Hugh dodges, spins, then opens up for a 51-yard punt return, only to have a penalty erase his effort from the buck. The Viking star puts on a spectacular running show against his former mates, and the 49er fans gave him a rousing reception at Kizar Stadium. Hurricane U is a favorite around the league. Here's a play that was a Viking favorite. Darkenden looks to pass, but instead hands off to McElhenney. The king of the broken field runners turns in one of the most exciting runs of the year. Plays like these produced many thrills for Minnesota fans throughout 1961. The 1962 season should be even bigger and better. The Vikings have made the grade against the best in the world, the teams of the National Football League. The Minnesota Vikings in 1961 were an ambitious football team with the desire to win from the opening whistle to the final gun. It was more than just an effort by a few stars that kept this team charging from August to December. It was a total effort by every man on the squad. The reserves kept the starters on their toes and came through with fine performances, and some of the headliners were knocked out of action. George Shaw, the veteran quarterback, spelled Fran Tarkenden and kept the Georgia star hustling for his job. Jamie Caleb and Doug Mayberry bolstered the Viking backfield while Fred Murphy, a second-year man, was busy at end. Filling in as line replacements, Ken Peterson and Bob Denton made the difference on offense, while Bill Bishop and Ed Culpepper took care of the defense. Don Joyce, Lebron Shields, and Paul Dixon were steady performers when it came to keeping the opponent's traffic inside their ends. When plays came wide, Dick Greckney made the stop from his linebacker slot, or Dick Fasanen and Bill Galt came up fast from their defensive halfback positions to help out. The big man behind the Viking machine is head coach Norm Van Brocklin, but he couldn't handle the job without the able assistance of his staff, Harry Gilmer, Stan West, Darrell Brewster, and Walt Jaworski. With a strong football foundation and five keen minds to develop this new and powerful machine, the Minnesota Vikings will be ready to make a run at the leaders in Western Conference play in 1962. With their unexpected showing in 1961 and the promise of improvement in 1962, the Minnesota Vikings are truly a part of Major League Professional Football. They'll be seen eight times in Metropolitan Stadium next season. The world champion Packers 
The Bears, the Lions, the 49ers, the Rams, the Colts, and one Eastern Conference team will provide the opposition. Get your season ticket for all eight games now. Write today to Ticket Office, Minnesota Vikings, Bloomington 20, Minnesota. See all the exciting action in 1962. Well, there are some of the highlights. We feel encouraged by this first year performance and thankful for the loyal support of the great fans in this area. I speak for the owners, the coaches, and the team when I say we are looking forward to an exciting and promising 1962 season. The Brewers of Grain Belt Beer have brought you highlights of the 1961 Minnesota Vikings professional football season.